Welcome back to the channel guys. This is a new episode of something pretty cool. I've ended up on a boat with Quinton who's a long time mate and he's asked if I want to join him on a kinder diving trip. So obviously I was going to say yes. I don't mind putting my hand to some good work and it's definitely an adventure. So stay tuned for the episodes that are coming and enjoy this one. So I have finally met back up with Quinton. We are headed to the Fjordlands. Uh, to do some diving, some kinder catching, some long ass days, but I'm pretty pumped up about it. And I'm very pumped up about diving with Quinton because it's been years. And I've never been down here before, so it's gonna be pretty interesting. Now, the first thing the boys did was get some tuna lures out the back of the boat. Now, this is definitely new to me, trawling for tuna. It's one thing we don't really have, especially in the Shetland Islands. Well, no tuna that I know of. Now, me and Quinton end up on the top deck having a cup of tea, just doing a bit of filming and I can't believe we actually caught it on camera. We caught just as the tuna smashed the lures. As soon as that happened, it was pretty much all the hell break loose. Drinking tea, catch just tuna, who would have thought? <laughs> yes! With the tuna caught, this is where the work begins. First things first, get the fish bled and get as much blood out of the meat as possible as it tends to just taint it a bit, especially with these fish. Now tuna are warm blooded and they carry a lot of blood. With Hayden in charge of butchering this fish because he's done it before and he knows best. I literally would not know where to start on this fish as it's completely different to doing a normal fish if you want to prepare it right. Now Hayden does an amazing job of doing this fish and it doesn't take us long before we just get stuck right in. <laughs> Whilst we were shoving our faces full of very, very fresh tuna, little did we know the boys at the back were pulling in another two tuna. There you go, there you go, pull it in. Get a whip, get double whip, rounder. Get low, get a whip. There you go. Now these things are not easy to pull in, especially on a hand line like this. It's literally just like having a rocket attached to it, a piano wire which you could chop your hand at any second. But you have to keep as much tension on your, the hook as possible because it can easily just slip out. With our bellies full of tuna, it's not long before we're waking up in the Fjordlands and it is raining pretty hard. 
which is okay because I'm used to that, especially coming from Shetland. The good news is it's straight up and down rain instead of side to side rain. So it's time to get the suit on and get out there and see if I've still got these lungs. And this is what we've come all this way for. These are sea urchins or kinna in New Zealand. Now you can see here they're all spread over the rock and there's not much kelp about them because that is, they've ate all the kelp and that's what they feed off. And it doesn't take them long if there's big numbers to demolish a whole kelp bed. I'm constantly checking with my dive buddy here, making sure he's okay, as well as that he's on a good patch of kinna, as you constantly want to do quality control, making sure they're nice, big and fat, as you really want to collect the big fat ones that are good, healthy condition. I end up diving this new location, big steep drop offs and out of nowhere a local comes to say hello. Although it's wet and horrible and raining and no sun at all, it's pretty incredible to actually see the scenery here and all the clouds that are really low cover just moving in about all the different islands and hills and mountains. And of course bump into all the locals like this little guy here and this big guy which I nearly swam straight into. And towards the end of the day, I was nearly done my last kit of kinna, and I seen something to the left of me in a big long crack, and it was a whole load of crayfish, so I couldn't help myself. I had to go down and have a go, and first go, I missed pretty easy. But then I seen this big guy who was actually eating a kinna, which I must have dropped for my kit, so I got down and I managed to grab him and fight my way back to the surface. Oh. 
It was an incredible first day in the Fjordlands. Despite the weather, I had an absolute blast. I'd done some good work and I got my first cray. I think it's actually my first cray in New Zealand, so I'm well chuffed about that. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. This is the first of many and I've got a few more coming of the Fjordlands and it only gets better. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.